Hello to the second part of the rest along video series. Um, remember in the first part we have created a custom business object and we attempted or successfully to use the data rest API to well use that business object with a base integration object and even query for and insert or update attachment records. So uh, as an extension of that, uh, we now dive into the yeah, weird world of the ASIs, the application services interfaces. So here in a new workspace, I have queried for the Siebel account business service, which is an EAI data synchronization service, also known as ASI application services interface. And uh, let me adjust the uh, object explorer real quick. So we see everything about this business service. So that's a standard business service and it's perfectly capable in the SOAP API. It's used in the web service API to, well, delete, insert, insert or update, query, synchronize, update, uh, Siebel account data. Now we have a custom business object and the goal is to copy this standard business service and make it work with our custom business object. So if you look at the arguments for any of these methods, you see that the Siebel message input is an integration object data type. And here's the name of an integration object. This is account interface. And in the user properties, there's an internal integration object named internal account interface. So there are two integration objects in the game. And let's query for these two standard integration objects so we get a better idea how the ASIs work. So there's one internal integration object which maps to the Siebel business object, so internal, and there's one XML type integration object. And that is the one projected to the outside world. Now the fun part is if you compare these two using Siebel tools, we'll find that they really only differ in two ways. First there is the type XML or business object and then they have identical integration components and identical fields but the internal one exposes probably all the fields there are and the external one only has a subset of fields. And what happens at runtime is that the, well, EI Siebel adapter and data mapper in the background actually execute an automatic mapping between those two. So an easy way with our base BCRM ticket integration object that we have created in the first place to support the data API, and we have a perfectly fine integration object here that exposes the custom ticket business object with the attachment child BC. Um, well, you guess what's coming next. So we're going to uh, copy this integration object. So just to have a separate uh, version of it for the ASI. So I, I pressed Control B already and it's copying. And let's give this a name. So this is the BCRM ticket interface. So that is going to be the external facing. And I change, just following the lead from Oracle, I changed the base object type to XML. And then I copy the original base integration object uh, one more time. And now I have the BCRM ticket internal interface and I can just keep the type. So we have now following the Oracle ASI example for Siebel account, we have two integration objects and we copy the Siebel account business service and let's call it BCRM ticket ASI application services interface. And for each of the methods, you, you can decide, of course, which methods you want to keep or hide or make inactive. 
Uh, but for each method that you want to use, you have to change the integration object name to uh, the, the interface integration object. So that's the XML external type integration object. So that's going to be returned, for example, for a query or requested for insert or update or delete as input. So for each method, I replace the integration object name. Okay, and uh, one thing that I see here is there is a status object input arguments. Now status objects are special keys in the integration object that are returned uh, after the operation. So designating, okay, insert or update was successful and here's the new row ID, etc. So it's probably prudent to make sure we have um, a status key in the integration object as well. Now, let's not forget the business service user property where we also need to reference the new internal integration object. All right, so taking care of that. So now the copy, the new custom ASI has the correct references, but uh, let's go back to the integration object and um, let's take a look at how Oracle done it with the account interface integration objects. So let's start with the internal one. Um, for example, the primary uh, component has a status key. Notice the key type is status key. So that is not a key used for queries. Uh, and it has, in this case, three fields. And the, note the operation field, which is a system field from e EAI Siebel adapter. And the, um, other, the other integration object has the same structure. Literally, they're, they're similar. So they are, both have a status key. So following this lead from Oracle, I go back to my new uh, internal and external integration object. And for the primary, um, just as for the sake of example, for the primary, I add a new integration component key. The name doesn't really matter, but status key is just fine. The sequence, well, set to, and the key type is status key. That's important. And you can add as many fields as are valid. Operation is one of the fields available in an integration component. And I just choose to add ID because I know it's there. So that's my new status key for this one. Uh, we don't really need a sequence in the status key, so that's fine. And let's repeat that for the external facing. So again, for the primary, I'm adding a status key just to satisfy the standard behavior. So you can use the status key input argument for the business service to actually send true or false to, to have a status key or not. Uh, I believe the default is true, so we are on the safe side. Okay. So we have everything in place. We have a nice looking business service, uh, a real application services interface that we created simply by copying. And now let's go for a quick test. So um, in the application, you can open the uh, workspace. I'm, I'm using DevPops to do that, but you can go through the workspace dashboard. And then let's go to sitemap and uh, good old business service simulator. So make sure you have that workspace open and inspected because not yet delivered, but then you can already give the uh, business service a first, well, kick in the tires. So you, the ability to select it actually is proof that 
you are in the correct workspace. Let's try query by ID. And let's provide the only input property required, a primary row ID. And in, I have uh, a valid row ID of a service request or a, a ticket here. And that has an attachment. So we get the Siebel message back. They're very good, no errors. And that's the list of BCRM ticket interface. And there's there's an attachment document, all right. So the, the first stage uh, has successfully fired. We have a, a working business service that returns a Siebel message structure uh, with the primary record and all the child records, including the attachments. Now this is just a business service. This is not yet a rest a rest call, but we are getting closer. So that looks very good. And so with that first test successful, we can go about and well deliver the workspace uh, because we need EI object manager and the application to be fully aware of that new business service and integration objects. So back to Siebel tools we go. And there's one slight mishap. Um, I have a display name from the copy. So I just changed the display name string override. So it doesn't show Siebel account in the display name. And you know, then the usual way, checkpoint and submit and deliver your workspace. Okay, and we're speeding things up here a little bit. So the delivery is done. So now uh, to prepare for the REST call, uh, make sure you log into a fresh session in the application. So it picks up your new main workspace or whatever integration workspace you have. Then go to sitemap. and go to administration application, business service access. Now this is necessary. You have to register each business service here that you want to access from the REST API. So we can find, of course, our new service here because it's delivered and add, just for the sake of demo, quickly add the required responsibility. I'm using SATmin, so Siebel administrator, and then add well, the methods you want to expose on the REST API, so make them available. So I'm I'm going to use query by ID. So that's the first method. You can register any method, of course, but I'll go with query by ID and insert or update or absurd. Uh, keep in mind that when you register a business service here, it's only accessible for users that have the associated responsibilities. Uh, clear the cache. And now time for Postman. So Postman I use for testing the REST API. And in the first part, you see uh, using the data API for the new business object. So now we use the service API. And let's call our new BCRM ticket ASI service, query by ID first. And let's add slash describe and do a get call. So this will, will retrieve the swagger or open API description. And so, so we just see everything's in order. The EI object manager can actually find uh, the definition of the business service. And we see that query by ID takes in a primary row ID as required. You can import these swagger files in Postman too, if you want. We keep things simple here. So the authorization is still set to the correct user. We're using basic auth. So now show time, we do a post for service method call, you have to use post. And in the body, uh, there's the body from the previous call. So let's remove that. And uh, there are two ways of actually using business services. I'll show you the first one where you have to declare the body in the body. <laughs> so 
uh, nested structure and in the body goes the input arguments. So primary row ID is the only one. Um, I just make sure I've got a correct row ID from my sample ticket. Okay, I'll paste that. So this is all, all that's needed for query by ID and that, that test record has an attachment. So it comes back with a Siebel message, just fine. There's the all the fields. I haven't really taken the time to inactivate a lot of fields, so there are an awful lot of fields. And here it is. There's the attachment, base64. So the query works perfectly fine. And that's a huge attachment. So it's really big. Uh, it's a zip file. So the query works perfectly. So now, uh, well, next next step is uh, to the moon with an insert or update of a new ticket with an attachment. Um, let me introduce you first to a parameter match request format equals Y. And if you do that, you can omit that body in in the request body and you get the, well, um, more formatted response uh, with the correct structure of the Siebel message. Notice the list of, of something. And that is actually much better to use for business service calls. So I, I usually use match request format and that it was introduced a while ago. So now I'm copying that response I got because that provides me with a sample case, uh, well, a parent ticket plus a child attachment record, um, but I have to amend it a little bit. So I'm going to use, well, paste that into Notepad and, um, well, create a use case, a test case for the insert or update call. So I save it as a JSON file and I use the JSON viewer plugin to format it. Yeah, it's awfully big because it has all these fields and for a new record, um, I really just need, remember the key I use, uh, just ID as a dummy for a new ticket. So ID is not really in there because it's a system field, but that doesn't matter for the REST API. So let's delete all these unnecessary fields. I don't need them for a new record. So bear with me. That's quite a lot. Okay, here's the attachment. Be careful with editing that JSON. Yeah. One missing comma can ruin your day. And here we are adding the ID field with a value, any value really. Dummy is my preferred value. So it will not find that. It will create a new record, right? And then we have the list of attachment. Let's keep that attachment ID. And uh, let's remove the unnecessary attachment field. So just keeping the file extension field. Zip is perfectly fine and the activity the activity file name. Remember these field names come from cloning uh, the service request uh, attachment BC, which is obviously a clone of activity. And let's change the activity file name to something we can recognize, big zip ASI, to be inserted through the ASI service call. So your external system, of course, has to prepare that payload with the correct base64 representation and let me get rid of that notes record that's another child in the integration object that we don't really need for the demo so it's not a comma to get rid of and that should be a good sample payload for a first attempt so copying that payload and going back to postman now it gets interesting and uh, of course, it's not query by ID. I'm calling. I'm calling insert or update. Just make sure I have the 
correct right correct writing insert or update okay here we go and keep the match request format because we don't have a body inside the body and it should work and we get a Siebel message back. Notice it has a, oh, the, yeah, it has the um, the status key, operation insert, uh, and the row ID of, well, both the attachment record and the row ID of the new service request or ticket. It's a custom custom business object. So yeah, there should be a new record there. Uh, let's go back to the service. So there's the, through the custom business object, inserted a record. Okay, and uh, with that row ID, uh, let's go to our custom screen using the custom BO and find that new record. Okay. There it is. Let's drill down. So we see there's the attachment. All right. Uh, let's make sure it's a real zip file. Download it. And it's not corrupted or anything. No, it's a real zip file with some reports in it uh, from Siebel Test Automation, by the way. But that doesn't matter. It can be any file. All right. So here we are. We have uh, successfully created a business service to use a custom integration object, custom business object, and call that business service through the Siebel REST API to query and insert or update attachment records. Thanks for watching. Take care and bye-bye.